Hello and welcome to Hustle is for Life Motivation. Um, and oh, we're having some bit of a problem here. Oh, there we go. We're back. Awesome. Right. So welcome to <laughs> Hustle is for Life Motivation. Um, and uh, I just want to say to all you awesomeness junkies, first of all, I'm really grateful that you've been following me so far and the fact that you take time out from your very, very busy schedule to spend time with me um, and try and basically stretch your horizons and expose yourself to uh, bigger ideas that will accelerate your life and expand your mind. So today, I want to start off by asking you a question. Have you subscribed to the channel? If you have not subscribed to the channel, pause it right now, go down and there's a button down there that says subscribe. Can't miss it. It's a big red button. Hit it and subscribe to the channel. Okay, let's start a relationship. Let's get digitally married and let's start a relationship. Okay, now today I have an amazing guest for you as always. Today's guest is a high school maths teacher. Guess what? I am also a maths lecturer. So we have a bit of a connection going there already. Awesome. Um, <laughs> He's a, a very loving husband, he's a men's relationship coach, and he has recently become a half marathon runner. He has been teaching high school maths for almost seven years and has started his career. He actually started his career in Buffalo, New York, teaching in both public and charter schools. However, after meeting his now wife, Christina, he moved to Rochester, New York, where he now currently works. And the awakening for him, I'm going to put it in quotation marks, so the awakening for him really took place when he was gifted a book, Mindset. The book was Mindset by Carol Dweck, okay? Guess what? Got a copy right here. Mindset by Carol Dweck. I've spoken about this book before uh, on the show. If you're not familiar with it, uh, then please go check it out. You know, it's an absolute must read. It's sold about a million copies so far, and it's all uh, to do with your growth mindset. How do you achieve it? How you develop it? And how you maintain it? Okay. Now, since he's actually read the book, he actually had a bit of an awakening inside of him, uh, and he finally. Uh, he was actually putting off the book, you know, reading the book for a bit, but he finally read the book after a few months and uh, that changed his life, okay? It showed him the importance of a growth mindset for himself, his marriage, his students, and now he tries to incorporate the growth mindset in every, uh, every single day in his teaching practice, okay? And he modeled it for his students by choosing to do a long distance running, something that he hated. Uh, and showed his students that through hard work and perseverance, anything can be accomplished. Nick ran the half marathon on the 30th of April 2017 in under two hours, given that he could actually barely do three miles previously. Okay, so that's a fantastic achievement. Now, after seeing the positive impact that the personal growth had on his marriage, Nick actually started a men's relationship coaching business as his side hustle called Moving Past Mediocre men's relationship coaching. So please help me welcome the relationship coach with a mathematical approach, Nick Maytash. <laughs> Thank you for having me, friend. my friend. I appreciate it. No problem at all. It's, uh, it's great to have you here, man. Uh, and I'm really great that, uh, grateful for the fact that you managed to uh, spare some time to be with us today. I think we're going to have an awesome session today. So uh, let's dig into it. All right, man. I'm, I'm ready. Let's do it. Awesome. So Nick, originally you and I first connected because I saw your post in one of the uh, Facebook groups that we're both members of, where you basically said that you had just finished your marathon um, and you did it because you wanted to kind of show your students like what's really truly possible for them. You um, actually tr tried to incorporate the growth mindset into your you know, teaching delivery, etc., And that's how we really first connected. And I was really impressed by what you were doing there because I try and do the same thing. Although, no, I, ha I don't run half marathons. <laughs> Not yet anyway. Um, but I, every single day when I connect with my students, I try to actually, you know, um, help them achieve some sort of, um, you know, conclusion in their lives, whether that's coming from um, personal development, or whether that's coming from growth mindset, psychology, entrepreneurship, you know, um, their emotional health, whatever. Like I try to get, get them uh, to see beyond what they already know. So I was really impressed by what you were doing there. So can you please just um, talk to us originally, like how did you get started with that particular project and what impact did it have on your students? 
So like taking it back to when I was gifted the book mindset, it actually the district, the school district that I that was hired by, they gave all the new teachers this book mindset. Um, and like you kind of said in the intro there, I put it on the shelf. I didn't get around to reading it. I just kind of, it's like, oh, that's a really nice gift. I'll just put it off for a little while. Yeah. Um, but then when I got married, um, I kind of had this feeling that I, I don't know, was more of an adult. And I, I started reading. And um, after a couple books of kind of reading some things that made me think a little bit differently. I was like, maybe yeah. it's time to pick up this book mindset. Yeah. So I read it. And as you've read it and you've talked about it, you know, it's, it's a great uh, picture of growth mindset versus fixed mindset in all different areas of life, including, you know, school relationships, um, you know, just anything, the whole gamut. And my, my thought was, well, how can I take this book that they gifted me? Obviously they wanted me to pull something from it and apply it to my classroom. Um, because, you know, as you and I both know, like you could tell a kid into your blue in the face that keep trying, keep working at it, keep doing it, and you're going to get better at it no matter what. Yeah. Um, but they just don't see that. Uh, they don't see that that spectrum of, of uh, you know, from, from not knowing it to knowing it. They don't see the in-between work. Yeah. So I decided that, you know, I, I need to find a way to model what I'm trying to teach them. Um, because if I try to just tell them about it, it's not going to work. So... I got to thinking about things that I'm not good at, uh, things that I could improve at and show measurable success or failure. Um, and I, I settled on, on long distance running. I was always an athlete growing up, but long distance just wasn't my thing. Uh, I played baseball and hockey, which are like sprint for 90 feet and then you get to stop for a second and take your breath and endurance was not my thing. So right. uh, I told my kids, I'm like, I'm going to you know, commit to doing this half marathon. It was about six to seven months away and you know, I, I will start to fill you guys in. So I started doing YouTube videos to, to show them my progress. I'd go from three miles to four miles to five miles. And, you know, over the time, the, the progress w was, was pretty good. And for a while, it, the kids weren't really all that interested. So I was kind of bummed. Right. But after about, after about five or six months, you know, kids were like, how's the running going? I haven't heard about it in a while. So like once I stopped telling them every single week what I was doing, yeah. uh, the curiosity kind of peaked and um, yeah, so towards the end of it, you know, I, I ended up doing the half marathon and mm. I got it just under two hours, five seconds short. I was an hour, 59 minutes, 55 seconds, nice. <laughs> but I was under two hours. Nice. Um, so yeah, it was just cool to have something to relate to, to their work in the classroom. You know, when, when they were having trouble doing their homework or maybe, you know, struggling with a certain concept as they were studying for a test, you know, I had more of a relatable parallel to say, well, you know what, over the weekend, I went for a run and I did not want to do it, hmm. um, but I went and did the work because I know I had this test, this half marathon in three to four months and I, I couldn't take the day off. So, right. you know, I could use that as kind of a, a leverage point for my students to, to keep them on the ball. So that's kind of where it birthed from was, was reading mindset and trying to figure out where I could put it into the classroom. And I really enjoyed it from my own personal perspective. Like, yes, it was a good teaching tool, yeah. but just kind of getting that personal accomplishment, it was, it was a fun, fun road. That's for sure. Nice. Nice. Awesome, man. Um, I think you, you're absolutely right. The fact is that the, when you do try and connect with the student and you try and tell them, look, you know, what you are going through right now in terms of your limited perceptions of what you can achieve, it's really not the full picture. And they find it really hard to actually see beyond that. So I think having something so concrete and practical where you were actually applying yourself and you know showing them look it can be done i'm doing it myself and this is how it works i think that that was really really powerful um and i it certainly like really hit base with me and i like i mentioned before don't do any half marathons but what i do try and do is talk with my students you know on different aspects so for example we'll talk about the fact that you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with okay mm -hmm. so let's make a list of your five and i'll you know tell them like i've made a list of my five so what do your five look like? Have they managed to achieve the same level of success that you want to achieve? Have they managed to hit the, all the goals that you have for your life? If not, then right. well, maybe time to upgrade your five. So how do you go about doing that? We will talk about things like, you know, your emotional intelligence, like how do you take hold of your emotions? They stem from your thoughts, right? So how do you take control of your thoughts by asking more powerful questions? What are your self-empowerment techniques? Like all that kind of stuff. So I do try to yep. talk to my students about that sort of stuff. But what you did there was, you know, something so 
powerful and practical that I, I was I was really really um, impressed by it. So yeah, thank you for sharing you. that. And uh, yeah, keep going, man. Keep going. I think you have you're <laughs> on to something there. So you know, yeah. maybe you can uh, maybe you can actually um, share that with other <laughs> I'm sorry with other educators and other teachers, and maybe they can get inspired by what you're doing there as well. Yeah, I hope so. I actually was telling my students as I completed this year's kind of mindset thing, uh, I think I'm going to make it a yearly approach of, of picking something I'm not good at and, yeah. um, you know, just showing my kids I'm getting better or worse or whatever I'm trying. And uh, so next year I'm actually going to learn how to play the guitar. Oh, wow. Um, which, yeah, which I, I'm not technically a musical person. My wife is a singer and she's amazing, but awesome. I, I have none of those gifts. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, next year is, is learning to play the guitar and my, my final exam of sorts is uh, my, my wife is in a band, so I have to play a song oh, wow. with her band at one of their gigs later in the year, kind of close to final exam time, so I can have some kind of sticking point for my students. But yeah, yeah. yeah. so I'm thinking about making it a yearly thing. I had fun doing it just for myself, so mm -hmm. <laughs> even if it's a selfish uh, journey, I'm going to do it again. <laughs> no, that's awesome, man. That's really, really great. Um, I think I think what you're doing is something really powerful that I think a lot of other educators and, and teachers can get really inspired by and maybe take that on board and adapt it in their own unique special way but you're definitely sure. onto something because one of the things is we do talk to kids about you know what to do and what not to do in the classroom and that's very yeah. dictatorial but actually making them you know being open to them and kind of letting them into you know your life i think that's really mm -hmm. powerful as well because yeah. you develop a really deep connection there and i think for some of them, that's what they need. Because one of the things that I discovered, you know, over the past year and a half since I've been, you know, teaching, um, is the fact that sometimes you're the only real person in their life, right? Which mm -hmm. is really sad. But sometimes you're the only real yeah. person in their life. And, you know, something small that you say can have a major impact for them because they're, they're literally starving for that. Yeah. And I've certainly seen yeah, like some definitely. massive changes in some of my students, you know, like at the start of the year, there were, you know, really poor behavior, no engagement, you know, um, have no aspirations, no goals, etc. And then by the end of the year, they're like at the top of the class, they're hitting like some of the highest, you know, uh, marks on, on, on like in that group. So fantastic. Sure. And I think That's you're awesome, definitely man. onto something there. So keep going, man. Keep going. <laughs> Will do. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. So, you know, you said you talked about the fact that you read mindset and like, you know, you, you say that it kind of changed your life. Can you maybe describe that process? Like how did reading that book change your life? Uh, you know, and um, the Facebook group that we that we both belong to, some people have kind of gone back and forth about this book. Some really love it. Some are just like kind of repeats the same process over and over yeah. again. And I think that's what I like about the book is that it repeats the same concept, but it just puts it into different areas of life and applies it and shows you different research and things like that. So yeah. as I'm reading it, you know, especially the part about education as a teacher, you kind of sink into those, those things about mindset. And yeah. so I was reading that and got really enthralled and, and then, you know, relationships came up and, um, you know, now that I'm, I'm doing this whole relationship coaching thing, I mean, yeah. this is prior to that, but. I'm looking at my my new marriage and thinking about um, you know what what parts are growth, what parts are fixed, what what things do we see as um, things that we can work on? And and my wife is is great, and our relationship is amazing, and I think uh, it, we attest that to having a bit of a growth mindset. Yes, there's going to be hard times. Yes, there's going to be times that that kind of suck necessarily, but. You know, we, we both understand that by working through it and knowing we can get better at it, yeah. um, it's only going to, you know, end up being being greater at the end. And just all those little facets of it just really um, opened my eyes to how malleable life is. Like, it's yeah. not going to be what you grew up thinking it's going to be. Like, it's going to be whatever you want it to be as long as you're willing to put the work in and, yeah. and know that there's going to be some roadblocks and failures and um, just kind of sticking with it because uh, I, I look around at, at friends, family, students, um, and I kind of, I don't know if you do this now, but after reading the book, you kind of look at them and you're like, well, you kind of have a fixed mindset. Uh, <laughs> you got a little bit of growth yeah. mindset there, you know, yeah, yeah. and just kind of seeing those, that, that structure of 
this is exactly what I, I can do. I can't do any better. I'm like, okay, so you have a fixed mindset. And then just kind of the way you see the world and the people around you in the frames of growth versus fixed um, really just put me on this spiral of personal development. I think it was kind of a, a linchpin of sorts to, to get me involved with everything else. Awesome, man. Awesome. No, I think you're absolutely right. Um, I think for people who are actually watching this, just to let you know, that I have done an interview with uh, Joram Hartley Weber, who actually wrote a thesis um, on the the most um, uh, successful kind of techniques um, that allowed people to develop a growth mindset in the three domains of entrepreneurship, sport, and education. Um, and he's been studying the growth mindset for for many many years. His his masters is actually on that. Uh, so I've done oh, wow. an interview with him. Um, so if you guys want to go and check that out, please go check that out. I'll put the link below in the description. But this is something that actually I think me and Joram talked about in that um, you know show as well, where we said that you do end up kind of labeling people, you know, not like in a bad way, but you do kind of like you know realize the fact that somebody does have a growth mindset or they don't and they're you know trapped in that fixed mindset state and we did talk about the fact that you know um it's it's so easy to be trapped in that hamster wheel where you're just going round and round and round in like your daily routines your daily practices and you're not really seeing what else is truly out there so to break that paradigm it's very important that you do expose yourself to you know um, bigger ideas, you know, the, expand that horizon and also surround yourself with the people who help you grow and expand, you know, your, your mind essentially. So that's really important. And there's a really, really beautiful quote by Tom Bilyeu, um, who is the founder of impact theory. Um, and he says, you're the average of the five ideas you spend the most time with. And certainly if you spend you, the ideas you spend the most time with, if they're the ideas that stem from the growth mindset, like you can't avoid, you know, having a growth mindset. By default, it's going to be, it's going to rub off on you. You will develop the growth mindset. So it's really, really important that you guys do go um, and surround yourself with those people and those ideas which help you develop the growth mindset. And Nick, thank you for sharing that. I think that, again, was something, um, you know, really powerful that the people who are actually watching this kind of need to know about. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's crazy how just a certain book or idea, like you said, five ideas that you surround yourself with, like once you filter out some of the, the stuff that you either had growing up or, you know, was taught to you by a teacher or whatever, like once you kind of experience the world around you in a different way, whether it be a book or a podcast or just a, a person that comes into your life and you're just like, wow, so that's how life could be different. Mm. And that's kind of what the what mindset did to me. It just kind of opened up these doors of what possibilities could be out there if yeah. you were to approach it with that growth mindset instead of the fixed mindset of this is how it is, this is how it's always going to be. It's just, um, and you know, as we, we know, it's a mixture of both. Everybody's got a little bit of both and, you know, you just kind of find those pieces of fixed and try to make them growth or, uh, you know, things like that. So it's it's definitely a, a like like the bill you quote. Yeah. As, as you know, we're, we're boys with Billy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and the fact is, like, look, look what, what you've been able to do as a result of it. The fact that you have a, you know, men's relationship coaching business. Uh, you have a fantastic relationship with your wife and, and your marriage is prospering and, and you know, you, you have a fantastic relationship. And the fact that you're actually employing it in your, you know, teaching practice and how it's impacting your students, right? So it's all come yeah. from that. So if you didn't have that you didn't have that growth mindset if you hadn't come across the book if you hadn't come across the the concept and the strategies and the processes discussed in the book like it your, your mind wouldn't have expanded and all of this wouldn't have taken taken place right so it's all yeah. stems from that so what i'm the reason i'm highlighting this is for the people who are watching this you know an idea can literally change your life and nick is a you know great example of it you know he's here live with us right now sharing how he able to achieve that so that's that's really really powerful and i want you guys to really you know kind of learn from this and and take it on board yeah all right so um let's dive a little bit deeper in terms of your relationship you say that you know um having a growth mindset uh, and you know 
developing yourself through that has helped you develop a you know great relationship with your wife so can you be a bit more specific about what impact impact did the growth mindset and personal development have on your marriage and what specifically changed in your relationship um you know i, I don't know if it was specifically to growth mindset fixed mindset but like okay. i said that was kind of the, the door that i walked through that that took me into this whole personal development space right. um and what i just found i mean i didn't necessarily um start being any different to my wife i just was you know, from my perspective, and, and she kind of can speak to this as well, that, you know, I just in growing myself, I started to show up in a different way, a better way. It wasn't like I was a completely different person. Yeah. I wasn't like a, a night and day type person, but I just kind of little things like leaving notes and, and um, you know, thanking, appreciating her, things like that. Um, just by improving myself, the relationship kind of, kind of, it permeates into the relationship um and and she shows the appreciation for that and i mean she's she's taught me a lot about relationships in general uh even before personal development uh and like i'll say that to the tell i'm blue in the face but it, yeah it's just uh and this is kind of the angle that i take with the men's relationship coaching now mm -hmm. is that you know it's yes it's a dynamic of two people it's interpersonal when you have a relationship but if you can work on yourself yeah. if you can um kind of just develop yourself personally and just work on things that that can improve your mindset your physical health your emotional intelligence things like that it's going to improve your relationship regardless it's not uh it's not going to be a detriment um and if it is a detriment then maybe it's not the rela right relationship for you because if you're stepping into who you truly are mm. then and then your, your relationship should take off from there if it doesn't that means the person that you're with might just not appreciate who you really are and that should be a, a red flag of sorts um but yeah, it's it's the personal development space, just kind of coming into my own and kind of realizing what I want to do and, and where I want to go with this life and for her to be my, uh, you know, my, my ride or die person until until it's, it's all over. Um, I'm just grateful that I have her as that person because she just, you know, appreciates everything about what I do and what I bring to the table and, and how our kind of uh, back and forth and, and um you know, push and pull of the relationship works. And, um, I know it would be different if I had a different girl by my side. So yeah, uh, that's, that's kind of how personal development has changed the game for me. <laughs> that's awesome, man. And, uh, <clears throat> sorry, I think, you know, again, what you shared was really, really beautiful. And I think you're, you're kind of reminding me of, uh, of a saying that I have, which is that relationships are not about the withdrawals you make, but the deposits you make. Um, so, oh, sure. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, absolutely true, man. And, and again, you know, I think you just kind of touched upon it. You have a really powerful and a beautiful quote from your coaching business. And it's the key to the best relationship is the improving the one that you have with yourself. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and I, I came across that quote and I, again, really powerful, really hit base with me. Um, can you maybe deconstruct that for us? Like, what does that quote really mean? Um, so it kind of goes back to, um, I don't know if you've dug into my blog or not at movingpastmediocre.com, but, um, it burns from this blog post that I had a long time ago, uh, called be selfish. Right. And I mean, I purposely made it a, a, a tagline of sorts that would get people kind of pissed off. Yeah. <laughs> like be selfish. You're not supposed to be yeah. selfish. Yeah. Um, but it, at the same breath, like being selfish is just taking care of yourself and worrying yeah. about yourself. And, um, it's, I'd had relationships in the past where, um, I had made it so much more about taking care of the other person, um, serving the other person. And it was almost to the point that I was kind of a martyr in the relationship. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm. and you know, those relationships had their ebbs and flows, but at the end of the day, you know, they ended because I, uh, you know, I didn't have, I didn't feel any self-worth in those relationships. Right. Um, and then, you know, when I, when I met my wife, um, and this whole personal development thing on top of just the person that she is like, yeah. I, I knew that, you know, the reason that she wanted to get married was because she wanted to marry Nick Maytash. And it wasn't because, you know, she wanted to get married, have kids, have a house. Like that wasn't the goal. It was yeah. to, uh, she really appreciated who I was. Um, and so that's kind of 
this angle that I have is, is if you can improve yourself, if you can work on yourself to the point that you can, you know, filter out all the people that aren't going to like the person that you are, mm-hmm. if you can step into your true self and, and be the, the person you want to be, and you find that person that understands, appreciates, and loves you for that, mm-hmm. then you're golden. It's, it's impossible to mess that up. Um, so, I know there's a lot of relationship coaches that you know coaches that will uh, talk about the interpersonal part. They will talk about communication, which all of this is important. It's not to say that I won't touch on those things with my clients, but um, I, I find that at the base root of it all, if you can't, uh, if you don't know what you're all about, if you're not developed in a way that you can appreciate the person across from you, then there's no point in doing it anyway. So um, that's that's kind of where the quote came from with the, the be selfish blog post and just kind of understanding where I was with my current relationship and comparison to other ones. It was just yeah. kind of a culmination of that into one sentence. <laughs> nice. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. Really, really beautiful though. Really beautiful quote. And I love it. I've, and I think I'm going to, I'm going to actually write it down and, and, you know, put it in my quote, uh, book. I have a book <laughs> where I have all the awesome quotes that really inspire me. And I think I'm going to put it down there. So thank you for sharing that with me. I think uh, it was really powerful. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Um, but you're absolutely right. I think, you know, if you work on yourself, so let's say both parties, right, work on mm-hmm. themselves, then basically what's happening is that the tide rises, right? Like as the tide rises, like everything rises as well. All the boats, all the ships rise with the tide. So that's really, really yeah. powerful. The fact that just by working on yourself, you can have a much better, more richer, more uh, blissful relationship. So I think I totally agree with that, actually. Um, whatever you're saying there, that's that's really powerful. And, and um you know, all the awesomeness junkies who are watching this, you know, Nick just dropped a whole, whole lot of gold on you. So, uh, you know, <laughs> take it all on board. All right. Right. Um, let's, uh, let's, let, okay, so let's, let's follow this theme because uh, we're, we're kind of talking about relationships and stuff like that now. So maybe can you, can you talk to us maybe about what made you want to start a re- men's relationship coaching business and, and how did you actually get started? Um, so... Uh, I guess where it, where it came from, and it goes back to the whole personal development thing. Mm-hmm. You know, they um, a lot of the books that I was reading and um, and podcasts I was listening to, a, a common theme of you know to find your purpose, find your passion, think back to uh, things you were good at, things that you enjoyed doing, um, and, and kind of pull those thoughts together and see where that goes because that might be where your passion and purpose is. So growing up, like I said, I was an athlete, um, but I always took more pride in being the captain of my team than anything else. Like uh, scoring goals, whatever, cool, hitting home runs, that was fun. But like if my teammates respected me and stood behind me and I was the captain of the team, like that was my, my, uh, that's where I got all my joy uh, of playing those games was being the leader of the team. Um, So that was like one part of it. And then the other part is, you know, as my group of friends, like my, I, I had nine nine groomsmen at my wedding. So I had a very uh, large group of, of guys and nice. most of them have been run, running with me for 10 plus years. So, um, you know, as we grew from teenagers to young adults and now to where we are now, you know, it, it was not, uh, not unusual. If they were having a relationship problem, they would come to me. Mm. Um, and it wasn't that I was, you know, uh, an expert in relationships. It wasn't that um, I had the perfect relationship. I mean, I think mine's pretty close to perfect now. I don't know. My wife's probably watching this, so yeah, it's perfect. Um, <laughs> awesome. But uh, <laughs> Love it. but you know, it, it was just because I would listen to them. I would give them some kind of perspective based mm-hmm. on my own personal experience, things that I have gone through, things that I had kind of seen. You know, I I grew up. My parents are amazing. They uh, they are still married. They're got a great relationship. They're a good example uh, to see. Awesome. Um, so kind of feeding from that, my own personal experiences, I was always able to give them some kind of feedback that mm-hmm. they could turn around and then use. So just kind of combining those two things as I'm looking back on my life and thinking about things I'm good at, you know, I, I enjoyed when my friends would come to me. It was a form of trust. Yeah. I enjoyed when I was the leader of my team um, back when I was a kid. And, you know, I started to think about all of this and I'm like, you know, what? being a men's relationship coach probably could just combine uh, both of those concepts. Um, so it was kind of a, an organic 
moved from there once I kind of saw that as, as a path. Uh, cause I already had the blog and I was already kind of writing about personal development things and right. just kind of sharing my ideas on, on social media and things like that. And, um, once I kind of started to shift more towards the, the relationship side, I, I found, you know, that I, I wrote with a little more passion. I kind of interact with people in more authentic ways. I, you know, I still believe in all of all aspects of personal development, but it was kind of a, a niche that, um, I felt that I could, I could really resonate with some people with. Nice. Um, so from there, I just kind of started letting little pieces grow and I was a part of a mastermind in late 2016, early 2017 that mm. I was around a, a lot of people that are in a coaching space. Mm. Um, and one of the guys that I got to know, Jay, if you're watching this, shout out to you. Uh, I, I got to see some of the testimonials from, he's a, a health and fitness guy, but more of a, a mindset health and fitness yeah. uh, niche type of guy. Um, so I got to read some of the testimonials from his clients and just reading their their transformation, like how grateful they were for, for Jay being in their life um, and just all of those concepts. I, I was like, wow, I want to do this for for guys I mean, even females of those guys that are having these struggling, like I want to have that kind of impact nice. on people where they want to turn around and say, like, I'm so grateful that you are in my life yeah. um, because you, you turned around my relationship. You made me, um, you know, figure out what I wanted to do with my life. All of like those things. I'm like, that is just reading them gave me chills. And I was like, I want to do that for somebody. Wow. Um, so from there, that was kind of the ignition of, I really need to, to put this, uh, put this in play and, and let it happen. So over the last six months, it's really just kind of been an organic growth of sorts, just letting some people into my world that that uh, just might need some advice. And, and, and as of right now, I don't know when this will go out, but uh, starting June 12th, we're doing a six-week free masterclass on uh, nice. just some of the things that I've come across of relationship secrets, things that, mm. you know, are common ideas, but maybe not um, fully understood that we can go through in six weeks and I'm going to try to get a group of six to 10 guys and just, you know, rap about these kind of things and, and try to do what, uh, what I, I would like to do is, is transform their relationships and, and really, um, bring myself to the table in a way that I can get those kind of reactions and, and really help them out in, in the best way possible. So that's kind of the, the birth story of the, the relationship coaching and, and I'm really enjoying it now that, that I'm kind of hitting full stride, but we'll see where it goes from here. That's great, man. And congratulations for getting started and, and you know, making it grow and, uh, you know, seeing all the success you are so far. That's fantastic. And, um, you know, I think I think you're you're somebody who holds who holds himself to really high standards. And I think holding yourself to really high standard means that everybody around you, they they will also start to hold themselves to higher and higher standards. So I think you going into coaching seems like the perfect kind of thing that you need to be doing because you're somebody who has that kind of influence. You know, you have the personality, that magnetic personality that, you know, um, kind of permeates awesomeness onto other people. And I love that. So, <laughs> yes, that's, okay. uh, that's grand. That's beautiful. By the way, are you, are you familiar with Javon Langford? You know what? I feel like I listened to a podcast with him recently on maybe School of Greatness. Was he on School of Greatness recently? Uh, do you know what School of Greatness sure. is with Lewis House? I'm not um, sure. I, but, I'm familiar with Lewis House. I'm familiar with the the you know School of Greatness, but I'm not sure if he okay. was on there recently. I haven't I haven't checked out the the recent podcasts. Um, okay, I've definitely and, listened to something with right. him on it before. Okay, okay. Um, so I'm aware of him. Yeah. Right. Okay. Cool. Because. Uh, he uh, he has uh, he has a very interesting perspective. He his uh, um, his perspective is that uh, most of the problems in society are because of dysfunctional men. So uh, <laughs> I think. <laughs> I mean, I can't disagree. <laughs> yeah. So I think we're weird beings. <laughs> yeah. I think um, I think you know um, you you can you could maybe. Um, you know, reach out to him and, and, and that could be that could be quite an interesting relationship there because he also works with men and he he uh, I think identifies himself as a men's empowerment coach. Oof, I like that. I hope he doesn't have that copyrighted because I'm like, I'm going to have to grab that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, check it out, man. Check it out. I'm, I'm just uh, I'm just trying to uh, 
think outside the box here. I, I, I did actually bump into him um, during um, an event in London uh, in December 2016. And I wonder if I, can, oh, wow. I actually have his contact details. If I do, then I'll, I'll see if I can set something up. I, I'll see if I can set up a connection. I'm not sure if I have his contact details. But if I do, I'll, I'll, hey, I'll set up a connection, man. Yeah, sure. I would, I would appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, okay, so you you talk about the fact that you know you this this process of actually you know starting a business was pretty much quite the n next natural step for you, right? From mm -hmm. you know coming from a growth mindset, working on personal development, and all that kind of stuff, and then you know uh, being somebody who people came to for advice for relationships already, it was a very natural step. So the thing is, can you maybe? Um, can you maybe talk to us a little bit about how how do you actually coach your clients at the moment? Okay, what what does that program actually look like for somebody? Who, you know, there there might be some people who are watching this and and they're they're interested to know more. So maybe you can just quickly describe sure. what what that entails. So, like I said, the the concept is working on yourself and letting that permeate throughout your relationship. Yes, there's going to be some interpersonal concepts of it, but the main focus is, um, and it's kind of a, in a mastermind setting. It's more of a group setting okay. because I feel like when you get guys in a room and somebody starts talking about their weaknesses, somebody on the other side of the room is going to be like, oh, I've had that same problem. This is what I did with it. And we can all spin on that together yeah. rather than me just trying to preach. Um, because like I um, actually, it's funny that we do, we're doing this today. I was talking to most of my groomsmen yesterday via group text right. and um they were like, well, you're not like, you, you've only been married for a couple of years. How are you an expert in marriage? Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm, I don't know everything, but I've experienced some things and the way that it's set up, the way that the, the coaching thing is set up, I'm trying to bring in a diverse group of men that can really help each other out. Mm -hmm. And I'm really just a facilitator. Um, and, and, you know, I've done enough personal development where I can see where the rabbit holes need to be gone down. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I guess the, the general, kind of weekly basis thing is every Sunday there's a weekly reflection form that I send out to them cool. that just kind of talks about their big wins for the week, um, some challenges, whether it be relationship or otherwise. Um, and uh, what goes along with that? Oh, just trying to take that challenge. I always think it's important to find your challenges and find a little bit of gratitude in those challenges just so you can put a positive light on them and, and really, you know, find a way to work with it. Uh, yeah. I think looking back, a, a lot of us will look at some of the major moments in our life and, and think of right before that was probably something pretty crappy. Yeah. Um, you know, just from my own personal experience, that's, that's what I've uh, always thought. Yeah. So, you know, just with all those challenges, understand that there's going to be a certain portion of that, that we can work on it and call it a positive. So the weekly reflection form kind of goes through all of that and then also sets them up with, I have this, I call it a purposeful productivity system that I put together uh, over the last couple of years or so that it kind of maps out their week and certain levels of importance that they kind of need to get to. Nice. Um, so uh, I don't know if you've ever read Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, but it kind of plays to totally that. Uh, yeah, okay. So they, uh, Stephen Covey goes into these four quadrants of um, – High level of importance and urgent, high level of importance, not urgent, um, low level of importance and urgent, and low level of importance and not urgent. So it, it kind of breaks it down into certain quadrants, and then we lay it out throughout the entire week, making sure that some of the high importance but not urgent things get done every yeah. single day. Yeah. Because, you know, to get those far off goals, those far off things that we want to to accomplish mm -hmm. a lot of us do the things that need to happen in the next 24 hours but we don't think about what we want to get done in the next month yeah. so part of the productivity system is that we make sure we include some of those things that are more far off goals uh, in our daily practice mm -hmm. so that's kind of their their Sunday reflection and then kind of direction for the rest of the week and then um, one time during the week we have kind of a private Facebook group where I'll, I'll uh, it kind of varies. Sometimes I just do a Facebook Live where they can come on in and comment and we can interact that way. Yeah. Or sometimes we'll do more of like a mastermind call on Skype or Zoom where we can see everybody's face and everybody can talk. Yeah. Uh, it depends on you know the group of guys that we get in there. Sure. Uh, it's all personal preference at that point. But 
Um, so we do that for about six weeks, and every week the the theme call is is kind of one of those big nuggets of uh, relationships from you know a personal perspective um, that I feel like all guys can can benefit from, and we just run through that for six weeks and. You know, sometimes we adjust as we go based on what those those calls go go as, and yeah. uh, you, you know, like at the first week we we have a call where we kind of open up six doors. Mm. Um, you know, we go with that. We want to make sure that it's serving the men that are in that community as best as possible. I don't want to keep it as rigid as you know a curriculum would be from from start to finish. Yeah. You got to go with whatever whatever the people need. So that's kind of the general format for the six week process, and you know, at the end of it. Um, it's it's really cool to see some of the growth and you know my big thing is um the guys testimonials are awesome but when i get a testimonial from a wife or a girlfriend it's like i don't know what you guys were doing for the last six weeks but thank you thank you so much like th those are the ones that uh that i really love um so yeah that's the general format awesome man it seems like you're doing some awesome work out there and, and the fact is you're providing some real value to to the people who are in that community both the men and and their partners so uh yeah man kudos to you that's uh, that's fantastic and keep going and you know relationships you. and yeah. um it, it is such it is a very delicate subject um and uh, something that's actually quite close to my heart as well and and, and I'm, I'm in the process i'm not going to talk too much about it here but i'm in the process of putting something together um to do with relationships and uh, i'm coming from a place of uh, concrete, practical stuff, right? So, um, I don't like, you know, just talking about things like you should do this and we should do that. And, you know, everybody should do a lot of stuff, but we don't. Sure. Right? Okay. So what to do, but more importantly, how to do it and understand the why behind it. Like that's where the kind of position where I'm coming from. Um, so things like, for example, you know, people might want to, um, say, you know, come up with unique date night ideas, right? You can go on to like Google or something and type in, uh, you know, date night ideas or whatever else. Um, and uh, you will see loads of blogs and loads of entries and loads of like people talking about even YouTube videos about, you know, things like that. Guess what? After going through those things myself for, uh, well, a period of time, um, it's all very repetitive. It's the same stuff, just worded differently and all that kind of thing. So what I did sure. was I actually created, you know, new unique date night ideas that I used myself in, you know, with mm -hmm. my wife in, in our relationship. Um, and yeah. then try to like put that all together um, to see how that works. But it was all based not on general stuff like, oh, you know, uh, have a movie night or do a takeaway, you know, uh, or, you know, go on, um, go to a gallery or a museum. Like it was actually something pure, unique and original that w wasn't on any of those blogs. And I just created stuff um, like that. Sure. So, cool. um, and I'm, 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 you know, trying to put something else uh, as together as well, which is, um, you know, how do you actually go about finding your ideal partner? And a lot of the stuff that I'm doing there is, again, to do with the growth mindset and personal development as well. Because, again, like I said before, it's, you know, if you work on yourself, then essentially that, you know, you raise the tide. And as the tide rises, then everything in the sea also rises with the tide. So, you know, I, I definitely believe in that. And I'm trying to put something together there as well, because that's something I really, truly am passionate about, because I feel that a lot of people either settle for something, you know, for less than what they truly deserve or the fact that they are they're in relationships which are toxic and they can't get away or mm -hmm. the thing that you know they just don't know how to how to go beyond the hamster wheel right they have a hamster wheel they have the practices routine and they're stuck in the hamster wheel but mm -hmm. unless you actually expose yourself to you know bigger group more and more grand ideas and break that hamster wheel and big a bigger one mm -hmm things are not going to change right sure okay yeah i'm with you man i like that yeah so <laughs> i'm uh I'm, I'm hopefully um you know put something there and uh it, you know uh, happy to share that with you if, if you so wish at some point um if that'll help you with your community as well yeah i would definitely appreciate it. i actually as you're going through the the date night stuff um another part of uh the uh, 
you know, the program that I incorporated in this last round, and I'll probably do the same thing in this this next free round that we'll, that I'm putting out there, just to kind of get people into the community and see what it's all about. Yeah. Um, I did like little weekly challenges, um, and they could have been relationship based or just personal development based, mm. like things like buying buying a coffee for the person behind you in line, yeah. paying it forward, just you know, having a conversation with somebody that you don't usually do and yeah. just kind of stepping out of that comfort zone of how you relate to people mm -hmm. is going to help you relate better to your partner, to your, your person. So, um, yeah, I, I like the, the date night stuff because that also gets you out of your comfort zone. I mean, all of us have this regimented way of, of living life often. You know, you, you go to work, you come home, you make dinner, you go to bed and then just repeat, repeat yeah. until the weekend. But you don't have to do that. Like you can still go out on a Tuesday night or, you know, enjoy a, a nice date night that's kind of spontaneous. And yeah, I would uh, definitely be interested in, in seeing what your ideas are because I'm always up for, for new stuff. Yeah, sure, man. I mean, the thing is, it's not it's not the regular stuff like, for example, going to the cinema or going like renting a movie. Or, yeah. you know, none, none is like that. What I'm what I'm working on is actually that goes deep into the relationship itself. So, a very quick example. For example, um, one of the date nights that I organized for my wife was simple. Mm -hmm. We um, got some, uh, you know, uh, exotic drink. Uh, we mm -hmm. just literally turned all the lights off, sat on the floor with some cushions, um, had some candle light in the background, um, had some, it, it, we just got some olives and cheese and, you know, just like a um, snack mix thing together. Okay. And the idea behind it was that um, you have to, you have to tell the other person something that you think they, um, they might not know about you. Now, we've, we've been married for like seven years here, all right? So okay. tell them something unique, something different. And if they, I'm <coughs> sorry, if you tell them something new and different and they say, actually, I don't know, I didn't know that thing, then they get to say what they want from the mix. So they'll say, for example, I want the cheese, I want the black olive, the, you know, green olive, whatever. So then you have to close your eyes and uh, you have to actually use a skewer or like a um, cocktail stick to, you know, blindly try and pick that thing and try and feed that person. And if you get it right, if you get it right, great, you're off the hook. Otherwise, you have to go again and tell them something else that they think. <laughs> so things like that, original ideas that get you deep into the relationship and tell you what my wife to this day thinks that was one of the best date nights ever. Yeah, yeah, I like that. It's uh, that's cool. Maybe I'll do that tonight. Try it, <laughs> try it, my friend. <laughs> and you know, all you awesomeness junkies out there as well, try it. Let me know how you get on. Because for me, it was fantastic. <laughs> my wife was just like, "This is like beyond anything." We, we had a lot of fun. Like literally, we were doing, you know, usually date night lasts till bedtime, but literally this was till we went on till like beyond midnight. We were just sitting there playing this and great. having fun. It was so great because we were connecting at such a deep level. Um, it was phenomenal. So yeah, definitely awesome. worth a try. Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. look into that, my friend. Yeah, so it's things <laughs> like that that I'm, I'm trying to put together and, and share with people. So um, yeah, I mean, we can um, talk off, you know, off, the, off camera and, and, you know, go deep in that if you want. Um, sure. Anyway, guys, we are here with Nick Maytash and he's just been dropping uh, a whole lot of gold, a whole lot of value on us. I hope that you'll be finding it all this useful, okay? He is the relationship coach with a mathematical approach and he <laughs> is going really, really deep and he's sharing some awesome stuff with us. So I hope that you really, really find value in this. Um, okay, so let's, let's keep going um, with this. How do you think that coaching other people positively impacts your relationship? You know, the, uh, I, I do Facebook lives like every other week or so just to kind of, it often happens after I go for a run, I'll have just random thoughts as I'm out there for an hour or so. Right. But, um, you know, half the stuff that I, I put on, on social media or I blog about, it's really reminders for myself. Right. I'm just putting it into a context that other people can digest it. Uh, it's just like journaling. It's just more public, I guess. Um, so I think anything that I do from a coaching perspective, you know, if we talk about communication or, um, you know, doing small tasks, uh, for your, for your partner or understanding the five love languages, things like that. Like it just reminds me that I need to go back and reread things yeah. and, and kind of observe my own relationship in that way a little bit differently. Um, 
so yeah, it's it's really, and I don't even uh, know what the quote is or what the concept might be, but I've heard so many people say, you know, when you learn something great, if you write it down, great, um, but you really get an in-depth understanding once you start teaching it to people. And I mean, you can understand this as a teacher as well. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I understood algebra when I was in high school. I got it. But now that I've taught algebra for seven years, like the little intricacies of it all, you know, it, it's just like... It, it's it's so automatic to me and I can understand yeah. those and my kids say all the time to me like well, why do you like math I don't get it but like I, <laughs> yeah. ju I just have I such a yeah. such an intricate understanding of it now that I've taught it for seven years that I can just see kind of the magic of it mm, um, yeah. and I think yeah. you know the coaching thing can be the same exact way for me so I mean it's it's almost a selfish uh, a selfish position that I'm in where I'm kind of saying things that as I'm saying, I'm like, oh, yeah, I should probably go tell my wife that I love her, uh, <laughs> you know. Um, so, yeah, it definitely impacts our relationship because it reminds me of things that I, um, you know, best practices that I need to incorporate. Nice. Nice. Awesome, man. Yeah. And, um, yeah, you're, uh, you're absolutely right. The fact that, you know, uh, just, just to touch upon the math side of things, kids ask me the same thing. Why, why did you become a math teacher? <laughs> could have had any job in the world. Why did you become a math teacher? Uh, why do right. you like math? So yeah, no, I, I totally get that. Um, and uh, you know, just going back to what you said about understanding, I think most of the time people just know. There's a difference between knowing and understanding. And I think that, uh, for me, this is this is really powerful. Most most of the time, and most people just know stuff. You don't really <laughs> truly understand stuff until you until you actually are able to successfully teach somebody else. That's where sure. understanding comes from. And there's a really beautiful Carl Sagan quote, which every time I think about it, sends chills down my spine. And it says, understanding is a type of ecstasy. <laughs> now notice, like he, yeah, he did not say teaching is a type of ecstasy. He did not say knowledge is a type of ecstasy. He didn't say learning is a type of ecstasy. He didn't say knowing is a type of ecstasy. He said understanding is a type of ecstasy. And you, I, to, to me, that's so powerful. But I absolutely believe that you don't truly understand until you're successfully able to teach that something to somebody else. And that's where Completely true agree. understanding comes from. Yeah, definitely. Awesome, man. Fantastic. So, um, guys, if you're watching this and any of this resonated uh, with you, then uh, I'm going to put all the links and the details to contact Nick and find out more about his relationship coaching program, you know, down below in the description of the video. Okay. Um, and, uh, what we'll, what we'll do is just ask what I'm going to do is actually challenge you guys on this because I genuinely want you to reach out to Nick and, you know, talk to him, just, just send him a message. Okay. Start a relationship, start a conversation because I think what he's doing right now is absolute magic. And he has a lot of value to add to pretty much anybody because, you know, he's holding himself to such high standards that if you're actually in a relationship with him, there's just no way that it won't rub off on you. OK, so I'll highly encourage you guys and challenge you guys to go ahead and contact Nick. All right. And just start a conversation. OK, let's uh, let's 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 take it in a different direction. Um, sure. We talked a lot about relationship and stuff, but I, I want to go ahead and go back to your uh, teaching practice. Can you maybe. Um, Talk to us about how specifically do you incorporate personal development and growth mindset in your teaching practice? You know, I try to do it in subtle ways um, it, because what I found is if I just stood up in the front of the room and, and started preaching um, about, you know, growth mindset or <laughs> right. uh, just started like saying quotes all over the place, like they'd be like, all right, what's wrong with you, man? Just teach me about the math so we can be, be on. Yeah. Um, but so I, I actually have certain quotes that resonated with me. I posted them around my room mm. um, just so, you know, it's always visual to them. They, they don't have to read it at all. It's just something that if they were to be daydreaming like in my that. class, which shouldn't happen, like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, that they could just catch something that might be, you know, powerful to them. Yeah. Um, so I do like little quotes on the wall. I always update a quote on my blackboard. So, I mean, they're always facing in that direction. Um, sometimes it piques curiosity. You know, I have, I've had one on my wall for a while now by Jim Quick, um, and it says, uh, what does it say? Uh, if you fight for your limitations, then you get to keep them. Um, mm, and I like that. so I, I put it up there. I heard it on a podcast on my way to work. And as soon as I walked in the door, I was like, this needs to be on board. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
but the kids were like, well, what does that even mean? I'm like, well, you guys always say I'm not a math person. Mm. I don't get math. Like the more you say that out loud, the more that you put that out there, the more that you're going to continue to be that person. Yeah. And so like, that's what that's all about. If you fight for your limitations, then they're going to continue to be your limitations. Um, and some of the kids were like, wow, okay, that's really cool. And like, I've had this one girl in one of my classes that anytime a kid says, like, I don't really get this. And she'll just like say the quote out of nowhere. She was like, <laughs> if you fight for your nice. limitation, I'm like, ah, nice. I love this. Yeah. But uh, so, yeah, just little subtle things like quotes. And I mean, doing the, the half marathon, it wasn't something that was in their face. It wasn't a requirement of them to see what I was doing. But mm. it was just like, hey, this is what I'm doing. Um, try to see uh, how, it, how it went for them and for me. And um, it was just a, a way for them to kind of see me act on on what i believe in rather yeah. than telling it to them i uh, i don't know if you saw it but i posted on facebook like a week ago or so uh just this post about how talk is cheap and you know that yeah. you know i could like i said preach to them all day long and it's just not gonna not gonna sit well with them but if i show them mm. with with action with the half marathon with um these quotes that i believe in and being able to speak to why they're important um I think it's just one way to open their mind to how things can can work aside from what they actually believe. Um, because I, I mean, I'm sure you probably have this too. Like, yeah. teaching math is like teaching a foreign language to some kids. <laughs> yeah. And I'll have I'll have parents come in for parent teacher conferences, and they'll say, "Well, you know, I I know that they're not good at math because I wasn't good at math." Mm. I'm like, okay, so this is this mindset of of you know, this limitation of I'm not a math person is being passed down. No wonder they think that they're not good. And they might not be good right now, but by telling themselves that it's just not helping out. Um, so it's, you know, it's more of a modeling thing. Uh, it's it's really never preaching because preaching just doesn't, doesn't go anywhere with 14-year-old kids. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So it's just really showing them what, what, uh, what can be done with it. I mean, my, my wife actually said, uh, because I got nervous, a couple of my students followed my my moving past mediocre Instagram account. Oh wow! Um, and I was like, "Well, this is a little uncomfortable. I don't think I want them." I mean, it's nothing negative on there, so it's whatever. But she was like, "Maybe it's good that they see you not just being a math teacher, but doing other things too, like showing them, mm. you know, they're going to be on Instagram anyway. So if they see a quote that you post or a video that you put up of you running at four in the morning, then like, great." It's just yeah. another facet of your action that they can get, they can observe. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just all action. It's all showing them um, what can be done if you if you put your mind to it and, and letting it run from there. Awesome, man. Awesome. Yeah, the, that's that's uh, that's really great, and and thank you for sharing that. But I just want to touch upon the fact that you know, giving them concrete examples, actually showing them. Um, I think really makes the difference. And this is what you're doing. This is, I think, what's really, really powerful about what you're doing is because you're, you're actually, you know, showing them in practice, in real life, in real time, how it works. Yeah, so I definitely. think they will, get, they will get a lot out of it. Um, and I think it's a, it's a very special thing where, you know, like you said, that, that girl just shouts out that quote, you know. And I have that experience <laughs> as well, but some of my students are just like, yeah, you always tell us like, you know, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So like when they start, you know, quoting, you know, your quotes back to you, you're just like, okay, so this kind of might be going somewhere, you know? All right, you're paying attention. You're paying attention. <laughs> I mean, yeah. they watch everything. So anything that sinks in will take. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Awesome, awesome. So yeah, no, definitely, man. That, that's really powerful. So I think giving them that concrete uh, example is, uh, is, is really, really powerful. And I think that's, that's the thing that's really going to make a difference them yeah, awesome um okay so some again we're gonna change directions because that's how it goes you know i i, I jump <laughs> all over the place with with these interviews um okay so let's 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 change direction let's change switch lanes what specific practices and routines do you follow in order to continually grow and develop yourself okay so like i said the i, I did a mastermind um in late December, well, it was like early December through January of 2017. Yeah. Um, and prior to that, I had like a morning routine and everything. Um, I, I would get up and I'd read and I'd meditate and I, um, you know, just random little things that you hear in books or you read in books that yeah. might be helpful. So I was doing a couple things here and there. But once I started the mastermind, we kind of, uh, it was an expe expectation of everybody in the group to, we call it the Daily Six. So Tommy Baker, if you're watching, shout out to you in the Daily Six. 
but uh, it was, let's see, it was meditation, right. um, reading, it was fitness, um, it was, you call it purpose, so like anything that you're working on towards, you know, for me it might be the coaching program or my blog or something like that. And then uh, a sixth thing was, which when he said it, I, I didn't really get it, but now I completely understand. He calls it encouragement, like reaching out to somebody with encouragement or some sort of gratitude, like saying, yeah. um, you know, thank you for being you and all that. Uh, and then the last thing was uh, gratitude. So you had to write down three things you were grateful for. And um, so just kind of making this a, an expectation of that group, like I've been doing it every day ever since. Um, little tweaks in there for my own personal preference now that I'm not in the mastermind, but like those guys have become brothers to me. So it's it's uh, like we always have this common frame of how's the daily six going? What, what did you do this to, this morning and things like that? Um, so yeah, it's it's always <laughs> my mom or not my mom, <laughs> my wife. Um, she she despises that I get up this early, but I get up every morning at about 4 a.m. Wow! And uh, I first thing I do is I meditate. Then I read um, if there is because I do some freelance writing as well. Uh, so if I have a job that I'm working on for freelance writing, I'll do some of that. Or maybe there's like a module of the coaching program that I want to just kind of tune up a little bit. I'll do some of that. Um, and then I usually go to the gym before work just to get it out of the way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know there's a lot of health benefits to working out in the morning and getting your fitness in. But for me, it's like once the day is done at work, I'm my mind is my my body is burnt out. So I. Yeah. I'm not going to get a good workout in after work. So I just started going before the gym. So it's really just kind of making that space and time before the day gets crazy. Um, because a lot of us will find excuses to not read, to not uh, work out, to not uh, meditate. Like I made it my 90 day goal from January 1st to meditate every single day until March 31st. Nice. Um, and I hit it and I've been going ever since. Like I haven't taken a day off of meditation all year long, which like, it, uh, awesome. It's not a, a huge chunk of my day. It's like mm -hmm. 10, 15 on the weekends. I'll probably hit a 20-minute one just because I have a little more time. Yeah. But just having that space and that reflection and doing all of these things uh, before kids come in and, and are screaming and at 7 a.m. in the morning and all that stuff, just taking that time for myself, it kind of just builds blocks throughout the week, you know, because if you try to sprint through something that you're trying to get through, you know, a certain deadline or whatever, if you wait to the day before, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. Um, so it's really just daily practice of, of waking up, doing these things, and, and doing the best I can with them. Uh, because I, over time, I know it's going to pan out. And it might take six months. It might take a year. But at some point, like all the stuff that I'm doing today, all the stuff that I'm like, I'm going to look back at this podcast. And be like, remember that time? Remember that time that I did that podcast? <laughs> um, and how, how I've grown from there. So it's, it's really just a daily, daily practice. And um, just doing the best that I can every single day. Fantastic. That's awesome, man. Uh, by the way, did you get all of this, the, the daily six, um, from the Miracle Morning? You know what? I, I don't know exactly where Tommy got everything from. I think his is kind of a hodgepodge of things that he learned, kind of like what I was speaking to, finding things that worked well for him. Um, and then he kind of crafted it into this daily six routine. Uh, that that we kind of made it into a little game like we would always tally up how many pieces of the daily six we completed and then yeah, yeah. like at the end of the week we'd, we'd share our scores um, right. I'm sure he got some of the concepts from the miracle morning or something along those lines but uh, yeah I'm not quite sure but it, it worked well for me I enjoyed it <laughs> cool perfect but I think that that's a that's a really 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 good book really powerful book um, that even if you want to share with your uh, coaching group um, you know I think that'll, that'll be really really beneficial there as well um yeah 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 definitely I, i'm just wondering because the six things you were talking about and everything like that just like huh that's Hal Elrod. um but yeah <laughs> yeah yeah that's uh i think that'll be pretty cool if you share it with those yeah, guys definitely. if you haven't already that is awesome now in yeah, terms definitely. of meditation let's question. sorry no go ahead go ahead okay no i was just saying in terms of meditation let's dig a little bit deep there because i'm a big fan of meditation um and uh, okay. i use actually guided meditation i use an app called headspace um it's mm -hmm. one of the best apps out there i love it and yeah. uh, i also have a brain training program that i go through i also have an app that uh has uh hypnosis um so it, it, it induces like, you know, altered states of minds and all sorts of other stuff. Uh, so I use a whole combination of things. But what, what kind of specific meditation practice do you use? And is, is there some type of tool or app or anything like that that you use to help you with your meditation? 
So I used to be a Headspace guy. Um, wow. I, I loved Headspace. Mm. Uh, it was so the the daily or the the ten pack that you get when you started it. Yeah. Um, so I did that for a while, and then they had some promotion where you could do three months for ninety nine cents, and I was like, why not? It's only ninety nine cents. So I was doing that for a while, um, and then I discovered this app called Insight Timer. Okay. It's um, it's got a combination of guided meditations, and then there's a space where it's just some kind of uh, musical tracks, uh, instrumental tracks for more uh, unguided meditations. Okay. But it's free, and it's kind of it's got a community of like thousands of people that meditate, and it will tell you like how many people are meditating with you, and which ones they're doing, and um, it's kind of just a nice community of people that are, are meditating and, and consistently, and it's kind of cool that it, it tells you how many days in a row that you're meditating and, and things like that. So that's my go-to. Uh, what I do really like about the Insight Timer is that there are, I would say, probably 12 to 15 different categories of types of meditation. So, I mean, we all can do a mindfulness meditation every once in a while, and those are great. And I think uh, Headspace was very good at the, the mindfulness piece. Mm. Um but from Insight Timer, I kind of got into chakras and cleaning out your chakras and cle- cleansing those and right. um, things where, where there's mantras involved. Or the one that I really kind of stick to and I love doing are the visualization ones mm. where, you know, they're, they're walking you through a process of, you know, take a deep breath. Think about what your life's going to be like in a year. So, like, I think about my wife and I, what are we doing? Do we have kids yet? Like the whole bit. And then five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now. Um, and they kind of scale up and just kind of that, that process of putting what you want into the visualizations and the, yeah, there's law of attraction that goes into that. And, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm not a devout believer in the law of attraction, but I definitely think there's something to it there, um, that can't be ignored. So the visualization stuff has, uh, has really resonated with me. It's my, my favorite one to do. So I usually save those for the weekend where I have a little more time and I can really dive into them. Mm. But, you know, usually about 10 to 15 minutes during the week, like a mindfulness one or a gratitude one. But Insight Timer has been my main go-to. There's a few things on YouTube that, like the Abraham Hicks method, I think. Have you ever heard of that? No, I haven't actually. Okay, That's so it's new. it's always 15-minute 15 15 minute chunks. It's the same woman every time. Okay. Um, and hers is a lot of law of attraction stuff as well. But okay. uh, I, I did that for a little while, but I'm kind of on the Insight Timer kick for now. Cool, cool, awesome. Um, thank you for sharing that. And, uh, you know, ladies and gentlemen and boys and girls who are watching this, meditation is something really, really powerful. And uh, uh, a testament to that is if you know uh, the Tim Ferriss show, to, on the Tim Ferriss show, Tim Ferriss interviewed like literally the top performers from, you know, all fields. And he's interviewed like mm-hmm. hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. Um, and uh, he then actually wrote a book called Tools of Titans where he actually combines the best practices of, you know, all these top performers um, and experts in different fields into one place. And one of the things that he actually uh, says in the book is the fact that meditation or mindfulness practice was, you know, incorporated by about 80% of the people that he had interviewed on his show. Okay, Mm -hmm. so it just goes to show just how powerful mindfulness and meditation practices can be. Now, obviously, there's so many out there. It's up to you to go explore and, you know, find the one that works for you. Um, I've talked about a few of the things that I use, Um, you know, Headspace app. Awesome. I've talked about it before as well. And Nick just shared, you know, some of his uh, techniques and tools that he uses. So, uh, you know, you have a lot to actually work with just based off, you know, this little conversation, but go ahead and do your own research and try and work out what works best for you. But definitely it is something super powerful and it, you know, it's just used by some of the you know, best people in the world, some of the top performance uh, performers in the world. So, you know, there's definitely something to it, even if you, you think it's just, a, you know, a bunch of, you know, voodoo or, uh, you know, um, kind of like witch doctor stuff, but there's definitely something to it. Um, I, I can vouch for that. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely vouch yes. for that. Okay, so a uh, few quick fire questions, because I know um, I'm conscious of your time. We've kind of gone over that hour mark. So I'm very conscious of That's your fine. time as well. But uh, what we'll do is we'll, uh, just a few quick fire questions and, and then we'll, we'll try and pack it up. Is that okay? Sounds great to me. Awesome, man. So uh, first of all, in your opinion, what is the link between mindset and success? I, I really think that having a growth mindset, it, it encompasses so many things that have to do with success, you know, perseverance, um, just putting in the daily work, 
um, I mean, it's just, it's fantastic just, just to look at people that have had success. They're going to hit roadblocks. There's nobody that has a straight, straight shot to the top. Um, and having a growth mindset and seeing those things as um, beneficial in some way, uh, I think it's just, it, they go hand in hand. I doubt that there's many people that are strict up, strict, fixed mindset folks that are successful in any way that they want to define it. Mm. Um, I mean, Tom Bill used said a long time ago on back when he was doing inside quest yeah. that you know when he makes a mistake he gets giddy because that's his his trigger that thinks or that says to him like i need to work on this this is what i need to improve um and that kind of attitude is is why he is who he is you know he, he's built empire after empire and um I, I think it's really a testament to a mindset and I, I don't think there's anybody out there like i said that is super successful that hasn't kind of incorporated some some frame of, of a growth mindset in there. Awesome, awesome. I love that answer. And for people who are watching this, Nick has not said anything that you know the other previous guests haven't. All of them pretty much have said the same thing that there's a direct link between mindset and success. Okay, what for sure. if you want to achieve you know stratospheric level of success, you need to have a really really strong growth mindset. Okay, so. Fantastic. I love that answer. Right. Let's move on. Um, there's a quote which says happiness is a choice. What does that quote mean to you? You know, I think it goes back to how you view the events of your life, the circumstances around you, whether they're good or bad. We're all going to get dealt some pretty crappy hands from time to time. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just a choice of how you view it. Um, you know, you could and this this goes back to, to anything. It could be. Um, you know, a death of a loved one. It, it's super sad. Nobody wants anybody to pass away, but the fact of it is that they're going to. Yeah. Um, rather than focusing on the loss of that person, focus on how much they gave to you while they were mm -hmm. here. Um, kind of choosing that and, and being happy with that person being in your life is so much more impactful to how that event is going to kind of resonate in your life than, than if you were to just you know, sit and grieve and be sad. Everybody's supposed to grieve. Grief, grief is, is, you know, unique to the person. But when you take a step back and you think about, is it good? Is it bad? Am I happy? Am I sad? Mm. You know, you get to choose how you get to view that. Yeah. Um, and that goes, with, you know, with any of that. It's, it's just, a, you know, you wake up and you might feel tired. You might feel like you don't want to go to work. Um, and, and I kind of posted about this on Facebook the other day. Like, I did not want to teach my one class. I was tired <laughs> and I knew that they were going to be uh, less than enthusiastic about being there, yeah. but I just put a smile on and I started joking around with them and we had a good time. It was a good 55 minute block of, of, uh, of math that was taught. It was just, I chose to brighten up, do a little bit more, be a little bit more smiley. And it's, uh, it really, you know, reverberated throughout the room. And I think that anybody can take that, um, whether they're going to work or, or going to wherever, just kind of saying, am I happy right now? I can choose to be happy if I'm not. That's really all it is for me. Beautiful. Awesome, man. Love it. Okay. Um, another one. If you were to be stranded on a desert island for a whole year, okay, and you could choose <laughs> to take any three people that you want in the world with you, okay, apart from friends and family, which three people will you pick? Apart from family. Apart from friends and family. <laughs> so is my wife coming? Because she's got to come. No friends can, and family. Can, can we, no, no, no. No, no friends, friends and family. family. Ah. No friends and family. All right. So we're just bringing that's, people that I don't. Where, that's uh. where the fun is in this question. No friends and family. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. I am definitely going to bring Tom Bilyeu with me. Um, just following his, like what he's trying to build. I think having that guy around, whatever we come into, like he'll figure out a way that we can, we can, we can spin it and make it work and yeah. yeah. So I'm bringing Tom Bilyeu. Um, man, this is a good question now that you've ruled out fr friends and family. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. I would also bring, I'm trying to think of, uh, I would also bring a guy like Tony Robbins. Mm -hmm. I mean, that guy's energy for how long he's been doing it. Like, And I know that he, <laughs> it's ironic that he, he titled his Netflix uh, movie, I Am Not Your Guru, because that's how a lot of people see him. But like he's been doing what he's been doing for a long time because he's that good at it. Um, so just his his energy and, and what he could bring to the table and just 
I know we're going to have bad days on the stranded island and having him around, he's going to be like, no, we got this. Um, so let's see, aside from those two guys, oh man. Hmm. I didn't want to give you a knee jerk response. So I'm trying to think about it. Okay. Take your time. Uh, cool. <laughs> let's see a third person. I'm trying to think of someone that I, I, uh, I respect, I aspire to be like, let's see. Hmm. You know what? I am also going to opt for Ryan holiday. Mm -hmm. Um, so I've read both of his books. I think, I mean, he's about my age, if not younger, I think he's a year younger, maybe a year older. I don't know. But like to have his level of success and his perspective and, you know, his big thing is stoic philosophy. And I, I really, uh, a big fan of Stoic philosophy, and yeah. I think we're going to need need to have some Marcus Aurelius with us while we're uh, sitting on a stranded island. So I will take Tom, Ryan, and Tony to be my my partners in crime on the stranded island. Beautiful answer. I love it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, love it. <laughs> love it. Um, and I think I think Tony and and Tom will definitely be on my list too. So yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. Maybe maybe we're on the same island. I don't maybe know. on the same island. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Um, right. Thank you very much for that, man. Um, just very, very quickly, I want to ask you, like, what are you working on right now and uh, how can people help you? Uh, I mean, the, my big thing right now is is the men's coaching program. Yeah. So um, whether you're a guy that wants to improve yourself and your relationships around you or you're a woman that is looking at your, your current relationship and, and might think that your guy could use a, a band of brothers to kind of uh, circle himself around to improve himself. Um, I know it's a, a tough conversation to have with your guy, but like I think that the way that I approach it is is not in a way that's a judgy. Let's sit on the couch and talk about our feelings for a long time. It's it's really about improving ourselves and and being the best man that we can be, regardless of the person that's around us, and yeah. just expecting that to help us out. So mm. um, helping me out is really just kind of get the word out about the uh, the men's coaching program, um, whether it's sharing or just you know, reaching out to me and saying, I, I'm interested. Can you tell me a little bit more? And, and we can work through that. Um, and then where you can find me, Instagram, moving past mediocre. Um, on Facebook, it's Nick Maytash, which I'm sure will probably be somewhere in here. Um, so yeah, uh, I mean, on Facebook, I, I use that as my main platform to share any thoughts that I have, any Facebook lives it's where I kind of use my blog to, to post and, and do that as well. So I just love interacting with people. Um, on social media, especially, I mean, you're, you're out in England, right? Yeah. Um, so for, for me to be in Rochester, New York and, and be able to communicate and, and have this conversation with you, I, that's what I love about social media. So, um, find me, connect with me. And, and if I can help you in any way, whether it be the men's relationship stuff or just, you know, be interactive with me on, on social media and you find that, that I can be helpful in that way, then awesome. Um, so yeah, that's, that's my, my general place you can find me. Fantastic, man. Uh, and I'll make sure that I put all those links and stuff below in the description. If you can send me over the website link or anything else that you want me to put in the description of the video as well, then I'll put that below in the description. So people who are watching this can go straight there and they can reach out. And if you are watching this, um, I would highly encourage you to reach out to Nick uh, because, you know, he's just dropped a whole bunch of value on, on you guys and on me. I've learned quite a bit as well, uh, you know, through this uh, conversation with Nick. And I think... I think you need to actually take action. Okay. Everything like life happens when you take action. I strongly believe in that. That's one of my quotes. Life happens when you take action. Okay. If you want to accelerate your life, you know, you, you have all these amazing guests that I'm bringing on the people that I'm in a relationship with. So you can start to accelerate your life by actually incorporating, you know, some of their, uh, kind of, you know, psychology and mindset and, you know, their techniques and tactics and strategies and processes. And that will allow you to accelerate your life. This is why I'm actually doing this to actually add value to you guys. So really, I will highly encourage you if you are an educator, you absolutely have no excuse because you know, guess what, Nick is a math teacher, he is an educator, <laughs> you have to reach out to him. And if you're a math teacher, like, that's just like, you have, like, 
strictly no excuse whatsoever okay that's just like <laughs> not even fathomable that you won't reach out to nick at this stage all right look at all that he's able to accomplish maybe you can like you know learn so, something from nick about how you can incorporate you know the personal development and the growth mindset in your teaching practice okay um so definitely i will encourage you to reach out to nick if you're an educator especially if you're a math teacher but also in case you know you you might be in a relationship you might uh, have been in a relationship for a long time or the fact that you are new to a relationship or the fact that you know you're maybe thinking of starting a relationship whatever whichever stage you're at i think nick has a lot to offer whether you are a boy or a girl you know feel free to reach out to nick i think he has some awesome stuff that he can share with you guys he's dropped a bunch of value to uh to us in, in this conversation um but like through his coaching business and and his actual you know having one-to-one -one access to him is going to be where you're going to find the most value okay so all the links all the handles are going to be below in the description of the video. So I strongly challenge you guys to go and reach out to Nick and just make contact. Okay, life happens when you take action, guys. Life happens when you take action. So Nick, thank you so much for taking the time and spending the time here with us. I think you um, are a phenomenal person. You're doing some awesome stuff. You know, keep doing all of it. Congratulations on your coaching business. Congratulations on completing your half marathon. You are you know, trying to make a real impact in the lives of the kids that you're working with and in the lives of the people that you're coaching through your men's relationship coaching business, uh, both the ladies and, and the men there. And, you know, you, ha you, you seem to have a fantastic relationship with your wife and uh, i just wish you all the best with everything man and if there's anything i can ever do to help you do not be afraid to reach out i'm only a phone call away well thank you man i really appreciate you having me on and i really enjoyed our conversation so hopefully the the people that are watching got some great value from it um hopefully they found some some tweetables as as some <laughs> folks like to say some quotes they can drop on their friends yeah. um because I mean, that's what it's really about finding those little nuggets like we said in the beginning of this you know it's an idea once you get an idea in your brain that that could really open up some doors for you hopefully we open some doors for some people um but yeah thank you for having me on i had a, had a great time no problem man i'd love to have you back on later on um uh, because what i one of the things i do is that on this channel i follow the stories of lots of awesome people so i try to you know okay. maybe connect with them and, and get them back on later on to actually see how far they've progressed what's going on etc etc so um Beautiful. i'll be bringing on some of the old guests you know back onto the channel as well and i'd love to have you back on as well i think we had uh, an awesome time and an awesome conversation i think people found a lot of value in this um so i think we can we can go for round two maybe sometime i would love to awesome man well thank you so much for your time man and people once again you know thank you so much for taking the time to actually you know be here i really appreciate you taking your you know uh time from your busy schedule to spend time here with me and uh, my goal always is to serve you guys to bring on more amazing guests and um what i would really appreciate is that if you go and subscribe to the channel just down below you know leave your comments maybe you know Put in some suggestions on what kind of guests you want to see in the future and also just engage with the post like share these videos with some people who might you know be close to you and need to hear these messages need to be come across these people and these ideas because that's where all the differences that's where all the value is okay but i really really appreciate you guys thank you so much and thank you nick once again and uh hope to see you guys very soon in the next video all right take care nick see ya all right take care man see ya